Television City in Hollywood, we bring you the Jack Benny program with Jack's special guest, Liberace, presented by Lucky Strike. Friends, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and the fact of the matter is... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky's taste better. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Why, everybody knows Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, mild tobacco that just naturally tastes better. And Lucky's are made better. They're round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly with fine tobacco in a better made cigarette. Golly, you're just bound to get better taste. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact is... <laughs> Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's right, Lucky's right. Hello, Mr. Benny's dressing room. Star, stage, screen, radio. And right now he's in front of the cameras trying to convince television. <laughs> Who's calling, please? Oh, TV Guide magazine? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, I'm sure he'd be glad to pose for pictures. He want to do a story about his program. Oh, he'd be more than flattered. But I'll tell Mr. Benny just as soon as he... Benny. Benny. Oh, you want Beanie? <laughs> He's on another network. <laughs> Benny and Beanie is close. I'll bet Cecil the C6C -C -C serpent makes more than I do. <laughs> Hi, boys. Hello, Rochester. Well, there's another show over with, and Rochester was the most wonderful audience out there. You know, they didn't miss a thing. Got every gag, laughed at everything. And I don't know, you know, Rochester, there's something about, I don't know, when an audience laughs the way they did today, I, I, it does something to me here. Yeah, that's the spot, all right. <laughs> huh? You almost had a heart attack when they laughed at Bob Hope. I did not. Listen, I'm going to get these clothes off. I'll be ready. Right Rochester, now you know very, very well that I'm not jealous of Bob Hope or any other comedian. I like all comedians. And let me tell you something else, Rochester. Believe me, it isn't, it isn't only the comedy that counts or the laughs. It's how you look out there. It's your appearance. Well, Believe me, that's important, too. You know, I saw your show and you really looked good today. I did? Uh-huh. You know, in the close-ups, your shoulders were as broad as Victor Mature's. No, really? Uh-huh. And in the long shots, you were as tall as Gary Cooper. Honest? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. and, uh, and in the medium shots, you were as thin as... as... as Captain Hepburn. Oh, right. Thanks, right, Rochester. Hey, Jack. Yeah? Jack, I... Just ran out of cold cream. Have you got some? Yeah, there's some on my dressing table there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rochester. Uh -huh. Take these, will you? Yes. <laughs> Victor Mature. <laughs> Take this, too. Yes. <laughs> Gary Cooper. <laughs> Hepburn. <laughs> well, how does it feel to be Jack Benny again? Fine, fine. Say, Rochester, while I was on, were there any calls for me? Oh, several, but one seemed to be urgent. You had a call from Mr. Liberace. 
Liberace? Mm hmm. Gee, yeah, it must have been important. What did he want? Maybe it was out of cold cream. Oh, don't be funny. <laughs> I better call back and see what he wants. Okay, I'll go get your trousers pressed. Liberace, huh? Mm -hmm. okay. Say, Mabel. What is it, Gertrude? Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah. I wonder what Stacy Bonehead wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny? Oh, oh, Gertrude, I had a very important message to call Liberace. Will you please see if you can get his home? Yes, sir. He wants I should get him Liberace. Well, pack up your troubles in your old kid bag and smile, smile, smile. <laughs> well, look who's being sarcastic. I'll bet you wish you could smile like Liberace. I could if I did what he did. What'd he do? He had his upper lip removed. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'd rather go out with Liberace than that sourpuss, Jack Benny. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, the other night, Jack took me out for a drive, and when we got to a lonely spot, the car suddenly stopped, and he said he was out of gear. He's been out of gas for a long time. <laughs> what was wrong with the car? Nothing. When he stopped the car, I thought he was going to kiss me, but he didn't. I even leaned back like this. I don't blame him. I've seen a better pucker on a clothes laundry bag. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gertrude, what, what's taking so long? I've been trying to get Mr. Liberace's house, but his line is busy. Oh, well, look at Gertrude. Keep trying to get him, and if you reach him, tell him that I'm on the way to his house. I'm going over to his home right away. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Jeffrey. <laughs> Did you call me, sir? Jeffrey, there's someone at the front door. Oh, very good, sir. <laughs> how do you do? Uh, how do you do? I came over here to see Mr. Liberace. Uh, I didn't know he had company. Oh, I'm the butler. Oh, oh, I... <laughs> Why don't you come in? Uh, thank you. Oh, Jack. Oh, oh Liberace. How, how are you? you? You know, this is the first time I've been here. You uh, really have a beautiful home. Well, thank you. My brother George and I find it very comfortable. You do? <laughs> yes, it must be nice and warm, too. <laughs> oh, you're referring to my candelabra. I didn't think you'd notice them. <laughs> I'm very observing. <laughs> well, you see, uh, anyone with an artistic temperament is inclined to be a little nervous and high-strung. And I find candlelight very restful. And it relieves the tension. And it practically eliminates the electric bill. <laughs> um, now, Liberace, I tried to answer your call, you see. I, I knew you'd called me, and they, uh, your line was busy. So I came over to see what you wanted. Right? Well, uh, Jack, I wanted to see you about something very important. Mm -hmm. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. Thank you. I beg your pardon, sir. But Pierre would like to know what you'd like him to prepare for dinner. Well, I don't know. Uh, what did we have last night? Quiz de grenouille a la Jose Ferrer. Oh, yeah. Quiz de la... Jose Ferrer? What's that? Frog slaves in a kneeling position. <laughs> well, I've, uh, I've, I've never had them that way. Oh, they're very good. Really? Do we have any left? Oh, yes, sir. 
Uh, three knees and a shin bone. <laughs> well, that's not very much. Oh, yes, it is, sir. You see, uh, the shin bone's connected to the knee bone, and the knee bone's connected to the hip bone, and the hip bone's connected to the thigh bone. <laughs> <laughs> this dinner could be on the hit parade. <laughs> Jeffrey, send Pierre in. Oh, very good, sir. Pierre? Oh, he's my chef. Oh, really? Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. In fact, he comes from a long line of chefs. His grandfather created a wonderful French dressing in 1888. An 1888 French dressing. He beat Chef Milani by two years. <laughs> Gee. Did you wish to see me, sir? Yes, Pierre. What do you suggest for dinner tonight? Well, we have some uh, breast of flamingo and uh, gazelle steaks. Breast? Breast of flamingo and gazelle steak. Mm -hmm. Would you like to stay for dinner, Jack? Well, if, if you uh, if you have enough, I uh, I wouldn't want you to run to the zoo just. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll have enough. Pierre, Mr. Benny will stay for dinner. Very good, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very very much. I um, well. Liberace, you certainly know how to live. You have a chef and two butlers. Huh? Oh, no, no. I just have one butler, Jeffrey. Well, what about this gentleman over here? Oh, that's Martin. He's my candle changer. <laughs> you mean he changes the candle? He can change them when one burns down without losing a flicker. <laughs> Gosh! <laughs> you mean he... Uh... You, you mean you have a man just to change the uh, candle? I have four of them. <laughs> I can't get over it. Now, um, I suppose you're anxious to know why I wanted to get in touch with you. Yes. Yes, I have. Well, I'll tell you why. I uh, beg your pardon, sir. What yeah. is it, Jeffrey? Yamaguchi would like to speak to you, sir. Oh, Yamaguchi. Send him right in. <laughs> Yamaguchi? He's my gardener. Oh, you have a gardener? <laughs> Yamaguchi, you wanted to see me? Yes, sir. I've got the bathroom all cleaned up, sir. Well, fine. Uh, if you'll step over to the window with me, I'll show you what I'd like you to do next. Excuse us, please. Yes, yes. but I think that uh, this fellow Martin is a little confused. He put candles on Yamaguchi's rake. I know. This is the day we burned the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, about this that you wanted to see me about. You oh, yes, yes. Well, Jack, you see, my brother George <coughs> is detained in New York. And I'm giving a concert tonight, and I wonder if you'd be so kind as to take my brother's place and play your violin. Me? Are you cr Are you serious? 
but uh, uh, Liberace, I, you see, I'm a, I'm a comedian, a buffoon, and the violin is just a, a prop in my hand just to, to get laughs, that's all. I know, Jack. That's the shame of it all. <laughs> what do you mean, shame? Well, you see, I feel that deep down inside of you is a great musical talent. But you just haven't surrounded yourself with the proper atmosphere. You may be right. <laughs> well, you notice, I always adorn my piano with a candelabra. And you know, the audience seems to sense that my inspiration is extracted from the warm glow of the tiny flickering flames. Tiny flickering flames, huh? Well, that wouldn't work with me. See, once I played my violin where they burned down the theater and I was still lousy. <laughs> However, if you'd like me to appear at your concert with my violin, I'd only be too happy to. Oh, well, good. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Jack. I'm oh, 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 uh, Liberace, of course, we haven't discussed money. Is his salary? I, I don't know if you realize uh, what I get for each appearance that I make. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. What do you get? Well, for may come as a surprise, you see, but I, I um, for each appearance, I get $7,500. Oh, well, Jack, that's for being a comedian. Mm-hmm. Now, what was the last salary you got just for playing your violin? A dollar eighty an hour. <laughs> it was a, a wonderful couple. I'm so glad they got married. <laughs> Now, anyway, I'll be so happy to be on your concert. Uncle Liberace! Uncle Liberace! Where are you? In here, Willie. Who's that? That's my nephew, Willie. He's been out playing football with his friends. Oh! Hello, Uncle Liberace! (laughs) I want you to meet Mr. Benny. This is my nephew, Willie. Oh, hello. How do you do, Mr. Benny? Hello, Willie. (laughs) Now, you run along and get dressed for dinner. Yes, Uncle Liberace. Okay. He's a cute little fella, isn't he? Isn't he? Uh, dinner is served. Uh, oh, fine. Shall we go in? Yes, and then we'll get ready for the concert, right? Fine, up. fine, Liberace. <laughs> Gosh, darling, is Liberace wonderful? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I just can't wait till the intermission's over. <laughs> Donald, what are you doing? I was just noticing everybody in the lobby is smoking a lucky strike. Are you sure they're all smoking luckies? Well, I, I imagine so. Oh, excuse me a minute, dear. Mm-hmm.
know, as you know, my brother George cannot be here this evening, but I was very, very fortunate to secure the services of another artist, Mr. Jack Bennett. Jack, I think you're overdoing it. Oh, oh, you didn't want this. Oh, oh, well, I'll get my other violin. I'm terribly sorry. I'll... <laughs> How about tuning up? What? How about tuning up? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> How about you tuning in? Oh, up? oh, give me a <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to play a number that I recorded that we've had many requests for, haven't we? <laughs> it's called the September Song. When it's rainy and wet or sizzling hot and dry my jacket keeps the weather out and freshness in here's why have you ever looked at the cellophane seal on a pack of cigarettes well probably your eyes can't tell the difference between one seal and another but the makers of lucky strike take special care to see that every pack of luckies is extra tightly sealed because that's what keeps the cigarettes inside fresher tasting now here's how the American Tobacco Company, as one of its many quality controls, tests the seals of Lucky's to make sure they are extra tight. This is Ruth Thompson, an examiner in the Lucky Strike manufacturing plant. Ruth takes packs of Lucky's right from the production line. She cuts the cellophane wraps in half and removes them. She puts each half open and down in a pan of mercury. Then both halves are tested separately under air pressure to measure their air tightness. Maybe you think that's a lot of fuss to make over a cellophane seal. 
But the makers of Lucky's know it's worth it. For when you take fine tobacco in a better made cigarette and safeguard the better taste of that cigarette by sealing in its freshness, you're going to have a better tasting smoke. After all, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. See for yourself. Be happy. Go Lucky. You know, these are the kind of shows that I always like to do where I have a chance to play my violin. <laughs> Of course, when I was a kid, you know, I had to make up my mind what I wanted to be. And now I'm sort of sorry that I, you know, took up the violin. I would have much rather have been a baseball player. <laughs> Although I imagine she would have married him anyway. <laughs> but I'd like to have you meet my guest star again, Mr. Liberat. how wonderful it was having you on my show and how nice you've been to be such a great sport about oh, it's it. fun all the kidding and everything and i uh, i understand you're giving a concert in pasadena saturday night is that friday, right? friday, oh, friday 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 night that's civic right. auditorium that's right and incidentally jack all kidding aside if you'd like to pick up another dollar 80 cents i'd love to have you <laughs> well i i'd love to do it but i have another wedding that <laughs> you know thanks Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll uh, be back in three weeks when my guests will be Mary Livingston and Joan Benton. Three weeks from Sunday. And next Sunday, be sure and listen to and watch Ann Southern in Private Secretary. Thank you. Thank you. Appearing on tonight's program are Deep Benadere, Shirley Mitchell, Rex Evans, Claus Barbert, Rolf Sedan, Lane McConnell, and Roland Keith. Remember, one week from tonight on this same station, Ann Southern returns in private secretary. Stay tuned for Toast of the Town on the CBS Television Network.